An increasing number of women in Fiji are becoming victims of rape. It is a fact borne out by the rising number of raped women who seek help from the Fiji Women's Rights Movement and the Women's Crisis Center. Since 1989, the Fiji Women's Rights Movement has been actively involved in an anti-rape campaign by educating women about their rights and pushing for legal reforms. It is estimated that worldwide, only one out of 10 women who are raped report it. Due to social taboos and myths about rape, the percentages of reported rapes in Fiji is quite likely much lower. This program provides information about legal, medical and police procedures involved in reporting rapes. It is a false idea that rape is committed only by strangers. Up to 80% of rapists are known to their victims. Believing the myth keeps many women from reporting an unpleasant sexual episode with a man they know, or even calling the incident rape. Only one dollar. That's me. I only got enough for my bus fare. So together we got no one's on 80 cents. Yeah, I don't know why now we want to come home. We got no money. Oh, he's so special. If he knew that he knows it, he lives near your home. Yeah, I know. Hi. Hey. What you getting doing? You getting ready for a taxi? No, we shall go home. Are you going home? Oh. <laughs> well, I'm walking home. Oh, can I come with you? Sure. Hey, you I'm going to go with you. Wait, who's that boy? He knows he lives next door to us. Well, you better be careful. Don't worry. I know him that well. He's my brother's good friend. Here, take this one to reach your set. Okay? okay. See you tomorrow at Netball. Mm -hmm. Lisa. Mm -hmm. Lisa, how about we just go up here? No, Fad, just take your hands off me. Come on, just look at him. Just do something! can do anything because he wanted to. Somebody help me! Hello, Mariani. It's me, Louisa. Mariani, please, can you... Can you come over? Yes, now. Please. to do anything. But you have to, Lisa, for your own sake. What can I do? What will the people say? What about my family? I just don't know. Look, there's this place called the Women's Crisis Center. I've been hearing a lot of things about them, and they deal with this kind of thing. I think if you talk to the woman there, they will know what to do. They're going to help you. Are you sure? I'm sure. Come, you go, before somebody comes home and starts asking questions. <laughs> A 
become my fault this happened. I shouldn't have trusted Timothy. It's not your fault and you shouldn't blame yourself. It's Timothy and the others who are to be blamed. They are the ones who attacked you. Anyway, I don't think I'll go to the police about all this. You don't have the, to report the matter to the police. But it's important that you get medical treatment after rape. I'm so scared about getting pregnant. I feel some pain in here. Would you like to go to a private doctor or do you want to go to the hospital? I prefer the private doctor. I don't want everybody to know. Sure. Why don't you rest here for a while? I'll go and ring the doctor and tell her that we're coming. Thank you. Less than 10% of women who are raped report it to the police. Even fewer go to doctors, although it is very important that they get medical help. There are three main reasons why a visit to a doctor is necessary. First, to prevent sexually transmitted diseases or VD. Second, to prevent a possible pregnancy. And third, for any other injury you may have sustained during the sexual assault. If you are raped, you should see a doctor within 48 hours. The sooner, the better. You should take a supportive friend or relative with you to make the ordeal easier on yourself. If you do not wish to involve people you know, help is available 24 hours a day at the Women's Crisis Center in Suva. Rest assured, everything is strictly confidential. If you think you might want to press charges, do not clean yourself or change your clothes before you are medically examined. You may destroy important evidence you would need in court. The medical examination includes recording of injuries, bruise marks, and areas of pain. An internal examination and collection of some specimens will be necessary. This can be very stressful. That is why it will help you to take a supportive person with you. You have a right to ask questions and if you think you can't go on, you have a right to stop the examination and refuse treatment. But remember, the medical examination is for your health. Only a small percentage of rapes are committed by strangers. These rapes, however, are much more likely to be reported than acquaintance rapes. Rural women are particularly vulnerable to rape by strangers. Hello, is your husband home? No, he's across in the next field. Can I get a glass of water, please, then I'll go and find him. Okay, just wait there. Hans house and use his phone. Don't go, he might come back. When I go, lock the door and don't let anybody in. The police are often not very helpful to women who have been raped. This is often because they, like many other people, believe myths about rape. Myths like a woman asked to be raped by the way she dresses, or by the fact she has gone out drinking, or that men cannot control their sexual desires. Since the police are apt to be less than sympathetic to a rape victim, you should not go alone to the police station. Get a counselor from the Women's Crisis Center, or a supportive friend 
or relative to go along. The police will take down all relevant information needed to prove a case. Badly injured women will be taken for medical attention first. Then they will be taken back to the scene of the crime. Finally, they will be brought back to the police station and a full statement will be taken. Many of the questions may be embarrassing due to the nature of the crime. If at any time during the statement you become too upset to continue, you may have the right to stop and continue the next day or at another time. We will need to have a full description of the rapist. Also, a description in your own words of what happened and details of any conversation between you and the rapist. You will be asked to read the statement, and if you agree that it is accurate, then you sign it. When the rapist is caught, you may be asked to attend an identification parade. If you change your mind about pressing charges after the investigation has begun, you may notify us that you want to withdraw the charges and a second statement to this effect is then taken. You may not be able to decide immediately after the rape if you want to press charges or not. You may want to see the rapist caught, tried and convicted, and therefore stop from raping other women. But you also may not want to go through the further humiliation of a public trial. The decision is up to you, and you must decide what is best for you. You might find it helpful to get counseling from a counselor at the Women's Crisis Center. If you didn't know this man, why did you let him into your house? I didn't let him in. He forced his way in. The door was open, wasn't it? Yes. An open invitation, wouldn't you say? Why don't you tell the court the truth? That you willingly had sex with this man and then got frightened because your husband might find out. <laughs> no, that's not the way it happened. He punched me and he threw me on the floor. I've never seen him before in my life. <laughs> Here in Fiji, the legal system, especially court procedures, are discriminatory and unsupportive of women. The Fiji Women's Rights Movement wishes to improve the law's attitude towards women and rape. We are suggesting the following reforms. One, that the definition of rape be widened to cover all types of sexual assault. This will have the effect of sexual assault on women being taken seriously and will attract heavier punishment. Two, that rape should be regarded as a crime against a person, not as a crime against morality. Third, that at no time during a rape trial should the raped woman be asked questions about her previous sexual experience with other men. These types of questions have no relevance to a rape trial the only matter should be whether the woman gave her consent. If she did not give her consent, then it is rape. The questioning of a woman's past sexual experience will have the effect of making her story less believable because of the double standards that society has of women's sexual behavior. Four, rape trials must be held in private. This is to protect the woman from a society that still blames the victim. Five, men accused and charged with rape should not be released on bail. Bail is a system of letting out a person who has been charged of a crime until the actual court case. These men are a danger to women and may also threaten the raped woman before the court case actually begins. Six, that a court should accept a woman's word 
when she says that she did not give her consent. The rapist should be on trial, not the victim. Seven, that lack of corroboration in a rape trial should not prevent prosecution and conviction. Corroboration is independent evidence. It is hard to find this type of evidence in a rape case. Rape trials should be like other criminal cases. The magistrate and judge should listen to the word of the victim and then decide whether she is telling the truth. Eight, we believe also that a woman who becomes pregnant from a rape must have the right to abortion. Nine, we also believe that rape within a marriage should be recognized as the crime that it is. Everybody has a right to say no, including women who are married. The last and final related concern for the Fiji Women's Rights Movement is that sexual harassment must be seen as a crime. We women in Fiji have to work together to change these laws. Sunita, this is Lisa. Lisa, Sunita. Now, I know you both have been through um, a recent rape attack and that you both are facing problems. Lisa, what about you? How are you feeling now? Well, I still feel dirty and ashamed. Some people who live around my place keep talking about me and saying that it was all my fault. You too. Even my husband blames me, even though the man admitted that he forced me. I didn't go to court because the boy's family came and did a bulu bulu, so my family stopped me from reporting. And Timo, he talks to me like nothing happened. Even my brother Junior is still friends with me. I'm scared to stay on my own at home, but my husband he doesn't want my mother to stay with us. I don't get on well. So what do you do? I just lock myself in the house. I stop going out at night, and during the day if I go out, I always call a friend. Do you have any friends who understand how you feel? Well, my friend Marianne does. But you know, I just can't seem to stand being near men. I just react and get frightened if I see a group of men, even if they are my relatives. You know, now I can't even have sex with my husband. But he forces me, and that makes it worse. Now he even hits me if I refuse. It's normal to feel different about sex after rape. Sunita, your husband needs to talk to somebody too. When a woman is raped, it affects the whole family in different ways. And without the proper help and understanding, it's difficult for survivors to improve and get on with life. Why is it that people always seem to blame those of us who are raped and not the men who rape? That's because people do not understand the reality of rape. They think it's a sexual act brought on by women's behavior instead of seeing rape as a physical attack on women by men in order for men to feel superior and more powerful. Rape is humiliating. It is a frightening experience because women lose control of their bodies. But it's important for women to regain that control and for men to stop overpowering us in this manner. To do this, we must make people think again to put the blame in the right place, and that is to blame the rapist and not the victim. As you both know, it's, that it's difficult to get over rape, and it's important to get help through counseling. You are both very welcome to ring us and call in whenever you want to.